Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of Maccabees TV. It's your brother, Priest Daniela, Lines of Israel. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining our broadcast today. As usual, when you come up in the house, you brothers and sisters already know the routine. I know a lot of you do it, but for those that don't do it, those that may be new to the channel, I would always ask that you brothers and sisters, please hit the thumbs up button, please hit the like button. As I always tell you, the like button is not to say you like me personally, but the like button is somehow tied into the algorithm. More people get the notification that the video is up and more people can join in to our conversation today. Um, so as we continue to press forward in trying to bring our people as much information as possible concerning this pandemic, that's called the coronavirus, um, we continue to bring information to you brothers and sisters as we come across it and as we feel it is relevant. And what it does is it empowers you to make an informed decision for yourself and your household. That is the point. We're not trying to scare you. It's not about fear mongering. And that's one of the reasons why I don't come before you brothers and sisters every single day. I don't wanna repeat myself. I think you brothers are and sisters are getting uh, enough news on this 24 hour news cycle constantly being bombarded that you, 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 know, you grow weary of it, right? Um, it's happening to me too. So I don't come every day just to be seen. I like to have a message, all right? So um, the latest is um, they have brought somebody before us. Before I get into that real quick, I wanna know, uh, do you brothers and sisters know who these two people are that's on your screen right now? Do you recognize them? Probably if you've been following the news, you'll recognize the person on the right-hand side of your screen. You'll recognize them. But the person on the left, maybe a lot less of you know who she is, although I'm sure some of you do. Well, let me tell you who they are. Uh, to your left you, is a woman by the name of Eunice Rivers. And to the right, that is Kizmika Corbett. Um, they have a lot in common. And that is what today's video is about. They have a lot in common. So I wanna present the information and allow you brothers and sisters to research it for yourselves. Um, Kizmika's being paraded all across social media. Everybody just so excited about Kizmika. Oh my God, right? So now me as a man, I could easily come on here and I could have done this show myself. But sometimes, especially since I probably was gonna go hard, Sometimes you women need to hear from other women. And the Bible even tells you that. Really quickly, I want to point your attention to a scripture. And then we're going to start the video. This is Titus chapter 2, verse 2. That, excuse me, verse 3. It says, the aged woman likewise, meaning the mature sisters, that they be in, be in behavior as becometh holiness, meaning they carry themselves in a way that they are set apart. They're not like the women out here in the world. They're set apart. That's how their behavior should be. Not false accusers, not given to much wine. Teachers of good things. One of the good things that our women are supposed to be teaching, the laws, the law, statutes, and commandments. That is what the good thing is. The good thing is the commandments. Reading on. That they may teach the younger women how to be sober. Because the aged women, it's their responsibility to teach the younger women. To love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, Keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So sometimes the reason why I bring Sister Malika on the channel is because certain things, right? There are certain things that sometimes the sisters need to hear from another sister. It's very easy for me to come forward and, you know, um, say what needs to be said, but sometimes I bring a sister forward so you sisters understand that it's okay for you to say certain things. It's okay for you to come out and you don't have to worry about being liked by everybody. 
because you're not going to be liked by everybody when you stand for holiness. That's not what it is. All right. So since this particular story is about two women, Eunice Rivers and Kizmika Corbett, I decided why not allow Sister Malika to come forward and speak on the analogies and the comparisons between these two women. Now, I must warn you that we're not pulling no punches on the subject. We're going to go in, or I should say she's going to go in. We're not pulling any punches on this. We're not in the time to coddle people or rub people's backs and make you feel good. Uh, those times are done. Now it's just time to speak truth to power. And as the Bible says, either you're going to hear it or you're going to forbear it. And this is my message, especially to you sisters, especially to you sensitive sisters. There's an old saying, if it don't apply, let it fly. If what she is saying doesn't apply to you, that's not you. You shouldn't be offended. When people talk about all the evil that black men are doing in the world, I don't get offended. You know why? Because that ain't me. So if and when we talk about some of the evil that black women do, if that's not you, you shouldn't be offended. But if you're offended, then you need to repent because it just might be you. So we're going to go in. It's going to be a little harsh. But you will learn something today that maybe you didn't know before, right? And I want to end it by saying this to you, brothers and sisters. They say, or I should say, I have a saying. And that saying is, tough love is still love. Love is not always rubbing you on your back, telling you what you want to hear and smiling with you. Sometimes love is harsh. Sometimes love is direct. And sometimes you're going to raise your voice. Because you love somebody and you want to get their attention. With that being said, brothers and sisters, the feature video. Shalom. Oh, hey guys, how are you guys doing? All right, I'm gonna try and make this quick. I'm not gonna try and stay on here for too long, right? And I'm also gonna try and contain myself. <laughs> okay, so I need to talk to you guys about something today. So, um, you know, my grandmother always say to us, right? If you don't know your history, you won't know where the hell you're going, right? Yes. So, so one thing that I know is that the white man has been very successful in recruiting the help of the black woman to do his dirty work. That's one thing that we know. Some of us do know that, right? The black woman is always willing and able to assist her white daddy as long as it has something to do with the destruction of her community, right? History has proven that. I mean, I don't have to remind you guys of that, right? A lot of you guys know the black woman has always been an instrument for the white man, a tool for the white man to use against the black community to destroy the black community. Now, why is that? Her and Christian pastors, right? These black Christian pastors. Why is that? Why is the black woman always being used by the white man to manipulate and destroy her community? Well, if it's one thing that I know about the black woman, the nature of a lot of black women is that a lot of black women crave the attention from the black from the white man. Crave the attention. They like power. They like the power that is given to them by the white man, right? You go into certain workplaces, and all the white men need to do is to give the black woman a little bit of power, you know, a little position in the workplace. And that black woman will have her foot on the neck of the black man in the workplace. Always. I've seen it. I've seen it. She doesn't get along with the black, with other black women, right? And she will have her foot on the necks of the black men. Yeah. She's always been an instrument used by her white daddy against the black community, especially the black men, especially the black men. Now, where am I going with this conversation? Where am I going with this, right? Now, 
let me ask you guys a question. Let me let me let me share my screen with you guys. Let me, I'm going to share my screen. Does anybody know who this is? This little sweet little old lady. Anybody remember her? Well, for those of you who don't, I'm going to jog your memory. I'm going to jog your memory. Okay. This sweet little old lady here, her name happens to be Eunice Rivers. Any of you guys remember her? Okay. Well, I know a lot of you guys might know who she is, but for those of you who have been living under a rock, I'm going to, I'm about to jog your memory. Okay. Her name is Eunice River, Rivers, right? And uh, let me just read a little bit of what they say on me here. Uh, this is a little bit of her autobiography here. It says she's a pioneer in providing essential health care to the rural poor in Alabama, right? So she was essential in providing health care to the poor people of Alabama. All right. Okay. Let's go back to my screen for a second. That sweet little old lady that you just saw there, her name again is Eunice Rivers. Sister Eunice Rivers was very instrumental in recruiting hundreds of black men between the year of 1932 and 1972 for the Tuskegee experiment. You guys remember that? You guys remember that, right? Those of you who know about the Tuskegee experiment, Tuskegee, Tuskegee, potato, potato, right? A lot of you guys remember uh, the Tuskegee um, experiment, right? For those of you who don't, probably been living under a rock, right? Sister Eunice was the woman, the black woman that was used. She was a nurse, okay? She was given a, a nursing degree and she was, she was recruited and used and sent back to her black community and for 40 years, 40 years, Sister Eunice, that sweet little old lady that you just saw there, for 40 years, Sister Eunice was used to destroy the black community, specifically the black men. She went into her own community and she recruited hundreds of black men and she infected them with the syphilis virus with the promise of bet with uh, 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 health care and whatever else she uh, she promised them, uh, because um, the white man says, "Hey, just go into the community, tell them that uh, they're going to get this and they're going to get that," and that's how she was able to convince them. Now we're talking about poor black men with no education, right? Now I'm not going to stay on this topic for too long, okay? So for those of you who guys who remember the Tuskegee experiment. OK, that here, right here, this is the woman. I just want to remind you guys of this. OK, this is very important. This is the woman here who was used to destroy the lives of hundreds of black men during the Tuskegee experiment. This right here, her name is Eunice Rivers. OK, this is her. All right. For 40 years, this woman recruited hundreds of black men with the promise of whatever the God helps, whatever she promised them, right? Here she is right here, injecting syphilis into the bodies of black men, right? Okay, now I'm not gonna stay on that for too long. I'm not gonna stay on that for too long. I'm not gonna stay there for too long. Okay, so now where am I going with this? Where am I going with this? Okay. Let me share my screen again. So now we're in 2020, right? We're in the year 2020. And so who do we have here? Who do we have here? You guys know who this is? Well, for those of you who've been living under a rock for the last couple of weeks, right? This black woman here is a reincarnation of Eunice Rivers. Her name is Kismakia Corbett, okay? That's her name. Let's go back up here to the top. Let's read what it says here. World, meet Kismakia Corbett, 
leader of clinical trial in search of corona vaccine. Okay? So this black woman here is the face of the coronavirus vaccination, right? And I see all over social media, black people are sharing articles about this woman. They're praising her. Oh my God, this is the black woman who's uh, creating the vaccine for the coronavirus. She's gonna save us all. She's gonna save the world, right? That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm seeing on social media. I've seen people posting videos after videos of this woman. Uh, she's the black woman with the big degrees right? Um, all the, the fancy degrees from her white daddy's uh, university, right? And she's the one that is going to save the world because now she is the face of the coronavirus vaccination, right? Um, does any of this sound familiar to, to you guys? Does any of this sound familiar to, to you guys? Because I was uh, over 70 years ago, this was her. 70 years ago, right? There's no difference. There's no difference. Over 70 years ago, they had a black woman parading around, recruiting black men, right? For an experiment. And here we are in 2020. And the same thing is happening all over again. We have a black woman who has been paraded in front of us, right? As the hero trying to get black folks trying to line us up because somehow we're supposed to relate to our sister Kismikia from the hood, right? We're supposed to relate to her. Now let's see who uh let's see who uh sister Kismikia is. Let's let's read a little bit about her bio here. Okay. So Kismikia from the hood, right? What the hell kind of name is that anyway? Kismikia. Huh? Some 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 little hood rat from around the way, right? She was born somewhere in, uh, uh, I don't know, North Carolina or somewhere. I don't, I don't, I don't even care, right? But um, she's an American viral immunologist at the Vac Vaccine S uh, Research Center, right? At the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Let me read that again for, and just in case it missed some of y'all who haven't been paying attention. She is an American viral immuno, uh, immunologist, right, at the Vaccine Research Center at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? Okay, now, let me share my screen. Who is this guy here? I'm sure you guys have seen this face within the last couple of months, right? This dude is the person in charge of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease. So he is in charge of Sister Kismikia. He's her boss, right? And so why is that important? Why is that important? Well, this is the man here name is Anthony Fauci, for those of you who haven't been paying attention, who is trying to get us all vaccinated. According to him and his buddy over here, right? Bill Gates, this is all of them right here. They want all Americans to be vaccinated with this coronavirus. And so why? Sister Malika, how, wh 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 where are you going with this, Sister Malika? Well, As we all know, within the last couple of weeks, we have heard that black people, let me go back to my screen. As we've all heard within the last few weeks that black people are dying at a rapid rate from the coronavirus. That's what white people are saying. That's what the news media is saying, that we're all dying fast from this virus, right? That's what they're saying. And a lot of us are actually believing that bullshit, right? I'm upset. I'm very upset, right? We're, we're believing it, right? Now, why is that important? So if they 
plant the fair in the black community, right? All they have to do is tell us that our people are dying, just dropping dead from this virus. And now we're scared. We're scared. Oh my God, we're dropping dead. We got to get this vaccination because we're all dying, right? And so now, what do they do? They get a black woman and they're parading her around in front of us because, see, we're supposed to relate to her, right? She's supposed to be relatable. She's Kismikia from the hood, right? She's Kismikia, whatever the hell her name is. She's Kismikia from the ghetto. That name alone, that name alone. See, they pick somebody with a name like that to parade around in front of uh, black folks, right? Because we're supposed to relate to her because she's some just a, some, uh, you know, Kismikia from the hood, right? And so let's choose her. Let's, let's prop her up. Give her some degrees, right? Right? Some big fancy degrees from some big fancy university. Let's prop her up. Put her in the forefront. Put her in charge of this vaccination. And parade her around in the black community. So we can get to vaccinate all the black people with this vaccination. Because that's the plan all along. That is the plan, right? That's the plan. The plan is to create a virus, scare us, then throw the narrative out there that black people are dying fast at a rapid rate from this virus, right? And so we're all scared now. And so now get a black woman and parade her around in front of the black community. And now we'll be lined up to take the vaccines. That's exactly what they want. See, listen, black woman, well, I, I, I won't say the black woman because I happen to be one of them, right? But a lot of black women is hungry for power and attention. That's what we're looking for power and attention. We want power and we want attention, right? And we want to, we want to, we, 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 you know, we just want to feel, you know, like we, we belong somewhere, right? And we want that attention from white daddy. That's what we want, right? That's what a lot of us want. Not me though, not me, right? But a lot of black women, they want that attention from white daddy. And they would stop at nothing, including the destruction of their community, to get the attention of the white daddy and the power that comes along with it, right? And so the black woman has always been used to destroy her community. Why do you think, look, look around you, look around you. Black woman has no control over her children. She can't find a husband, huh? And all she wants is to be up there with the white man and his big companies and corporation, right? She wants to be the big executive. She wants the power, right? And so she goes and she gets her big degrees, right? And that's all the white man want really is a, a, a black woman with a, with a degree, right? And prop her up and have her do his little dirty work, come back to the community and do a little dirty work, right? And that's exactly what happens over 70 years ago with the sweet little old lady, Eunice Rivers, during the Tuskegee experiment. They had that one black nurse. She was a nurse. She was a registered nurse, right? And what did they do? They gave her a nursing degree and they sent her right back into her own community and they use her to destroy hundreds of black men, giving them the syphilis virus, destroying their families. Their wives caught the virus. Their children were born with the, with, with the syphilis virus. This black woman for 40 goddamn years, for 40 years, she destroyed hundreds and hundreds of black men lives with a goddamn virus. 
that she took back to the community and gave it to them. She did. She did. She went to the community and gave these black men the virus and assist the white man in performing these experiments on her, her own brothers, her own black men, right? And here we are in 2020, history repeating itself. And that's the point I'm trying to make, history repeating itself. Here we have a black woman in 2020, right? Here she is again, here she is again. Take a good look at her. Here she is again. Here she is again. She's the total reincarnation of that sweet little old lady there that you saw. Okay, so now this one here, just like Sister Eunice, is being paraded around in the black community. I see black folks sharing her little articles and sharing her pictures all over social media, right? Because she has come to save black folks with this coronavirus um vaccination right so here we have in 2020 same thing history repeating itself over and over the white man is using the black woman right and she is willing and able and all she needs is a degree from the white man's university right that's all she need that's all she wanted and some just some power right some power because that's what that's what in in america a degree is power right and so that's what she got, her little degrees, right? Her little scientific degrees. And she's being used and propped up in front of us, right? To give us her little experimental vaccination, okay? She's willing and able, right? Here she is, look, see? Have you guys noticed that they're not saying, uh, they're not saying the CDC, is coming up with a virus. They're saying, meet Kismikia from the hood, leader of clinical trial in search of coronavirus. So she's the fall guy. And this dumbass idiot don't even realize that. She's the fall guy. They're calling her the leader of clinical trial in search of coronavirus vaccine. So if shit hits the fan, She's taking the fall. She's taking the fall because they're calling her the leader. She's the face of this virus uh, 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 vaccination. She's the face of the vaccination. They're putting, they're propping her up. They're putting her out there and she's the face of it. Now, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Stop sharing my screen for a second. So, do you guys do you guys see what happened when when uh, we don't know our history? We just don't know what's going on. You know, bound to repeat itself. So, what wh what's going on? Like seriously, what what's what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here is within the next couple of months, you're gonna see more of these people, this woman, is Makia, and she's going to be pleading to the black community to take that vaccination because that's the goal. The goal is to prop her up and get her to convince the black community to take that vaccination. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. What's gonna happen? Yep, black woman. Anyway, guys, I don't want to stay on here for too long. I just want to, you know, throw that out there for you guys. Just uh, jog your memory a little bit, that you guys see what's really going on here. What's really going on here is history repeating itself over and over and over. Right? Was it back in the sixties or seventies where they um? prop up the black woman, put them up in um, apartment buildings and kick the black men out of the house, right? That's what they did, right? Always the sisters are being used and nobody's forcing these black women to do these things. No one is forcing us to do it. 
We willingly accept these things from our white daddies. Who's forcing this woman to do this? Nobody. She, she, she just wants the, the power. That's just what it is. You know, when somebody say, oh, um, you know, they're just being used by the white man. Who's forcing them to do it? Nobody is. Nobody's holding a gun to her head. Nobody held a gun to Miss Eunice Rivers' head. Huh? For 40 years, somebody held a gun to her head for 40 years. That experiment was supposed to have been six weeks. Six weeks. It should have been six weeks. It went from six weeks to 40 goddamn years, right? Nobody held a gun to her head. And no one is holding a gun to your girl, Kizmikia, right? Or whatever the hell her name is. No one is holding a gun to her head. And here she is in 2020 trying to convince our people to take vaccination. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Well, you haven't, she, she's, you haven't seen it, her yet. I mean, she's, she's going to be, oh, you, you guys are going to be seeing more of her. Okay. She's going to be on the news. She's like, oh, she's going to be the hero who bring the vaccine to the black community because we're all dying so fast and so rapidly from this virus. And she is going to be the savior, the superwoman of this black woman who is going to be saving the black community because we're so dying from this virus that we, oh my God, we're going to be saved by the virus from this, I mean, you know, by, by the vaccination from this wonderful, sweet uh, black woman that's going to save us all. Yep. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. Let me tell you guys something. Within the next couple of months or maybe the next year or so, right? Now, I'm not predicting anything because I'm not some fairy tale person, right? But something tells me that you won't be able to go back to work unless you get a vaccination. Because your job is going to be required to tell you that you cannot come back to work unless you're vaccinated. And your job is going to be required to show proof of your vaccination to the CDC, right? That's what's gonna happen. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't, I can't predict the future. I don't know what's gonna, you know, but hey, something tells me that's what's gonna happen. In order for you to go back to work, you're gonna have to get a vaccination, otherwise you can't work, right? That's what's gonna happen. Do you think Sister Kismikia take vaccination? Do you think, um, Anthony, Fauci vaccinate himself and his children? You think Bill Gates vaccinate himself and his children? Really? You think these people vaccinate themselves? I'm sick of you people, you black folks, running around telling people that they need to vaccinate themselves. You know what? You know what I want to say to you people? Or we'll jump off a bridge. Or we'll jump off a bridge. Take yourself out of your misery. Who jump off a bridge. That's what I have to say. All right. Love you guys. See you guys later. Spacious air, reflecting the way of life under the Florida sky. Even the lobbies funnel in the great outdoors. Chosen. I was set apart, set apart for God's use, chosen, chosen, I was set apart, set apart for God's use, all men is image, chosen, they say the chain of shaitan is not that strong They say his time is running out, he ain't got that long They say murder, murder, kill, this is not that song Said I won't amount to nothing, they got that wrong